Good morning, USA. Yo 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 Yes, it's Thursday, and we got our guest host with us, Miss Jess Hilarious. Hey, what's going on? Why are you yelling, Envy? Or am I yelling? I don't know. Yeah, settle down, bro. Is he not here? Uh, yeah, it's hard to hear you guys. Don't you have some pork this morning or something? <laughs> Relax. No. Did you have some pork this morning? No, man. You know what's crazy? I'm tired, actually. I just got in because I was uh, I had to, I flew to Pittsburgh yesterday um, uh-huh. to go speak at Slippery Rock University. And I guess, you know, there's no late flights out of Pittsburgh. So yeah. I, I, we, I drove back. Well, I didn't drive, but, you know, wow. I, I rode back for so like five hours. So I got in like two in the morning. Oh. And I got I got rid by the, I got rode I don't know what to say rid or rode but I got rode by the hag last night. And well, yeah, you they can't move. Yeah, white yeah. people call it sleep paralysis, and I guess some black yeah. people call it sleep paralysis too. But yeah. you know, where I'm from in South Carolina, we call it the hag the riding hag, you. Yeah. Stuff is scary. <laughs> that stuff is scary. That stuff is scary. <laughs> stuff, is scary. She meant to say stuff, but she yes, said yes, the yes. other yes. word. But nah, the hag rolled me last night. Ha, <laughs> Paul. No. <laughs> I heard the footsteps. You seen him come? Kinky. I heard the... I don't think you had to dump that. You had to dump that. He was ready. ready. All right, we don't got no more dumps now. All right. <laughs> we all dumped out for this all break. Right. Okay. So I heard the footsteps, and then I saw, like, the male figure at the door. Mm. And then when I had my eyes open, that's when I realized, oh, the hag's mm. on top of me. Okay. So you know you're yelling and screaming. Yeah. But Was he buff? <laughs> no, he actually cut like kind of like a skinny. straight figure. Yeah. Oh, right. oh okay. So I, so I was yelling and screaming, but nobody heard me. What he looked like? It was just a shadowy figure. You don't. No. You can't break out the details of the face and everything. Like I'm just that. asking. Just asking. I can't wait to the hag ride both of y'all tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually hoping that a hag come get both hey, of y'all tonight. Yo. I Jesus. hope a hag come get Jess on her party the Sunday, the Saturday night before her party. <laughs> yeah, whatever. The party. Make sure you get your tickets for a Sunday in Baltimore. CIAA weekend. Charlemagne Envy we gonna be there and Angela E. <laughs> all of us yeah, All of us Angela Yee all week Now all of a sudden She's going to be yeah, there Yeah, Charlotte McGay DJ Anthony Everybody going to be there Well, Tyler Lepley Will be joining us this morning You know Tyler Lepley He's uh, in a host of uh, films He was in a, a, a film With Charlemagne That nobody seen That's a lie Back in the day That was a big That was a big film For TV One What are you talking about It's called Ring for what? TV One Oh, all right It's on Bounce now? I guess no, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if, if it replaced. If it ain't on TV, it don't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Russ Paul film called Ringside. Oh, Lord. Oh. Okay, that's like eight, nine years ago. Okay. All right. Yes. All right, well, let's get the show cracking. Front page news. We'll tell you about a new drug that's stronger than fentanyl. It's hitting hit different neighborhoods. It's pretty bad out there. We'll tell you about it, so don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Jess Hilarious, joining us. Of course, our co-host. Stop cursing, Jess. And let's get in some front page news. Now, I was telling you guys, there's a new drug that's stronger than fentanyl. Right now, it is hit at Los Angeles and Baltimore. How do you say Baltimore? Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, and it's affecting people worse than fentanyl. Mm. I didn't even realize people did fentanyl as a drug separately. I thought fentanyl was something that was mixed in that with you, other drugs. Yeah, that you just make a mistake and yeah. like end up dying from. What, well, what let's go to the drug? report, right? Xylazine is a veterinary tranquilizer, not approved for human use. Catron mm. says it has shown up in illegal drugs and prescription medications alike. According to our media partners at the Cincinnati Inquirer, the Hamilton County Crime Laboratory analyzed around 2,000 dosages of drugs or residue that contain xylazine in the last year. Catron says though it's more difficult to test for and to trace, the drug, also known as pink fentanyl and trank dope, has distinct side effects. And that is like the open sores, very, very big wounds that get um, extremely infected. Our street outreach people are doing a lot of wound care and things like that. Damn, is it, was it xylazine? Yeah. That's yeah. not like her That's not like her last name, Jenkins. Yeah. <laughs> I know she's from Baltimore, maybe yeah. Philly. <laughs> but can yeah. I ask y'all a real question, right? Wait, 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 all the things that, sh- how drugs are affecting people, right? And you hear about the zombie look and you hear about how it's killing people. Mm-hmm. What would make somebody say, you know what? I could beat the odds. Let me try that. Trauma, stress, trying to escape something. Yeah. But, but to try a drug that is killing people, you know what I mean? It's like, that's let me jump point. off the roof. Let me see if I, if I really make it. Like it's That is literally the point. Yeah. yeah. Clearly. Just want to get out of here before, yeah. before them nukes, man. 
trying, <laughs> trying to jump on. But no, just got a point. Like clearly, they don't want to be here no more. Yeah. Like, you know, if you don't want to live anymore, you know, just say that. Like you know, yeah. stop playing with it. But my thing is like, go go either seek help, get help, yeah. real help. Mm -hmm. But the people that clearly don't want help, they got an issue. They got a problem. They got trauma. They trying to run from. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, Nipsey Hussle's killer. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. Eric Holder gets sixty years to life in prison for second degree murder. Mm. That's great. Right? Yeah, I think it's fantastic. <laughs> That's amazing. I think it's fantastic. I saw people saying yesterday that, you know, they feel like it wasn't enough time, but I think that people are forgetting the 60 years to life. To life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's probably not going to ever get parole. And he probably won't see see a, a get any, get, even get in front of a parole board for 40, 50 years. He'll be mm -hmm. dead by then. Not to mention... You know what I'm saying? People in there that nobody did and all that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Ain't he been getting like beat up since he? Yeah, he's gonna have to be in PC. They're gonna have to keep him in PC because, like you said, they will probably kill him in that jail. I was gonna say, he probably ain't gonna make it to sixty. Like, I mean, not pushing that, but <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, here's, here's a report of all the charges. In the Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles, Department 104, the people of the state of California versus Eric Ronald Holder Jr. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Eric Ronald Holder Jr., guilty of the crime of first degree murder of Ermius Ashkadon in violation of Penal Code Section 187, subsection A, a felony, as charged in count one of the indictment. It's a travesty because y'all took a beautiful black man from this planet for no damn reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he deserves every year. And I know we live in an era that doesn't understand numbers. So when you see 60, you may think to yourself, that's not a lot of time. That's 60 years, bro. Right. It's 365 days in a year. He's mm -hmm. never coming home. Mm -mm. All right. And them cheeks is definitely going to get clapped. What are we talking about? What? Crazy. Yeah, I'm just I'm just hoping that he he, he never gets released because I think the brother's what thirty years old or some, somewhere in there. So that that means he be what 60, 70, 80, 90 years old. He and I just hope there's home. no good behavior. Yeah. I hope there's no time release or you know time taken off for good behavior. I just hope that he's there for the rest of his life. Eric Holder will die in prison. Mm -hmm. All right, guaranteed. Well, that, that is your front page news. Now get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again. 800-585-1051. Hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. To be true. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Well, you know, I from, from what I heard, you know, that was the situation. And, you know, if that was the case, you know, me being a street dude and, you know. I, kill, I disagree. You ain't him. got no hands? He called y'all today? I'm listen, man. You know, listen, Envy, man. I, I agree with you, man. But, you know, this is, listen, man. This ever man is different, man. Ain't nobody... Nobody know how to fight no more, man. Yeah, but I disagree with you, my brother. At some, I mean, I'm not sitting. I know people in the hood don't have the best conflict resolution skills, but you really going to throw your life away, you know, uh, because somebody called you out your name? If, if, if right, that was the case, true. I mean, even though we know that wasn't the case, but you're going to throw your life away because right. somebody but called I, you out their name, called you but, out your name. But just to take it away from Nipsey and take away from the situation, what the brother is saying, if you call me a snitch in in the oh, street, God. it's the truth. My my, and you in the street and you're doing street activity. That hurts your street activity. That's that's the truth. That's the positive. That that's the truth of it. Well, the story about the story of Nipsey was uh, they said that Nipsey was telling him this is what people are saying about you. Correct. So mm -hmm. you probably you know don't need to come around here unless you can show your paperwork mm -hmm. because I don't want something to happen to you. Mm -hmm. That's what this. That's what the story I was always. Yeah, that's presented. that's what was said in court. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hello, who's this? Hi, good morning. This is Roy from Boston. Hi. You guys, Good happy Thursday. Good morning. Get it off your chest, mama. So I just want to say I'm having a good day. I just got to the gym. I go to work at 8 o'clock. So I just make sure I get my workout in. Okay. And, um, you big? I do want to talk to Steph. Oh, shut up, Sorry? Man. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> she she want to talk to me. You want to ask if she big? No. Of all, I lost def 50 pounds did. on myself. What's I lost 50 pounds with eating good, working out. Hey, I, yeah, right. I never had a trainer. Yes, I never yes. used no YouTube. I didn't use no Instagram. Influencers. It was all me. That's so, what I'm talking right, about. Sis. Congratulations. Nice. All right. But Jess, hi Jess. Good morning. Hi, baby. How are you? That's well. I, well, I know how I, you're doing. Yes, I'm good. I just want to say that I think you, other than Ray J, Ray J was very entertaining. But I thought you was the best guest they had so far. Like. Because, like, you. to me, Angela Rye was amazing because she's my sister in my yeah, head. Yeah. But, like, having you up there, I didn't know how I felt about you before. But right now, I'm like, nah, Jess is dope. Like, you're really dope. I really, really want to say that you're dope. Like, oh, like, dope. like, 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 like,
<laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yo, thank you. Like, yo, you mad supportive, B. <laughs> thank you, baby. I appreciate you for real. Don't make me, don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. Forget it, Jess. I love you. Ahead, and I, I appreciate you. what you guys are doing. I like the, I like the guest host that y'all doing every week. It's amazing. I do miss Angela, but the guest hosting is really dope. I'm feeling it and keep doing y'all thing. So you thank don't you, want mama. us to, you don't want us to ever get a permanent host? Nah, I like this. No, I like this route y'all going. Not gonna lie. I like this route y'all going. Damn. But if y'all get a permanent host, that'll be that hard. Don't mean. That'll be hard. That'll be hard. <laughs> it would be hard because y'all had some real, real good so books. Person like y'all had some amazing. Like Lisa Ray was amazing. Like it would be hard to choose a permanent go- guest. It's right not now. really I, that. I, now, now you're talking crazy. <laughs> now, I was with you at first. Now you're talking crazy. Go ahead, get, nah, nah. Go ahead, finish your workout. You, you wild. You I'll buy. I'll, I'll let the record show though. You know, Jess was number one on my list. Thank you. I, I said I let. She know that. Thank I you. love Jess. Why everybody get so quiet? I'm not going to say that. Jess was like, in Envy? Yeah, Envy, what's up? Uh, nah, nah, you, you, were, you, know, you were actually number one on all our lists, you know what I mean? But Thank the thing you. is, it's just... I don't know if Envy had you at one. You were nah, top three, yeah. but I... Yeah. Nah, 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 we did. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. nah, we did. But the only thing with Jess is, like I told Charlemagne, Jess is just moving so much out there she between the movies money. and the shows. It's just, it's a lot for I every day. You. I don't know if Jess could do it every day, but Jess is getting to that bag, and I can't be mad at that. I told Jess that months ago. I'm like, Jess, you know damn well you getting too much money to be up here every morning. Uh, but maybe. 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 We'll see. We never know. We never know what God got planned. We got to see. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. How old are you, brother? I'm, I'm a good young 30, man. I was born in the 1990s, man. So he was he's 30 years old and just learned how to properly wipe his ass two weeks wow. ago because of the breakfast club. That is crazy. <laughs> and if you got bed bugs, bro, this is a serious problem. Yeah, I, man. You, you got to do something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. But I appreciate y'all, yeah, man. I love all right. my little people, We ain't doing man. nothing clean in this house. <laughs> See? Yeah, all right. See? <laughs> <laughs> Niggas get bed bugs every day, B. <laughs> Okay. See, that's the that's the when you a child, that's the one that your parents say stay away from them because that family dirty over there. That, that's that that's that dirty family over Lord there. Lord have mercy. Hmm. Hello, who's this? Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly, get it off your chest, mama. Hey, how's everybody? Um, Good. a topic I want to talk about is the LGBT community. Um, a lot of people not really talking about this topic. I mean, yes, they're talking about it, but I feel like they leave this stuff at stuff out that should be important which is are you part of that community are you yeah. a plus are you one of the, the lighters in the plus oh okay well you gotta mind your business say no go ahead go ahead, go ahead. My, I bad, like, my bad my bad I feel like <laughs> my bad go ahead I feel like the LGBT community has like a mental issue and I feel like not too many people are talking about that part I feel like they should oh. be they should at least go to a, see a therapist because it's just crazy how that community gets up every day like transgender for an example they get up and they be like okay I want to be a woman or I want to be a mama man. I'm not playing this you game know, with like, you this morning <laughs> I think you should listen to Jess Hilarious and be part of the NYDB community yeah, mind your damn business she, she should call up Laverne remember Laverne said you know you can call me for some questions that's right call up Laverne to see what she tell you Jesus get it off your chest 800-585-1051 now when we come back Jess you got some rumors for the people you already know listen real quick Master P respond to Jess Hilarious he coming at you he saying it's cat he yeah, saying you capping he said I'm spreading fake news Man. <laughs> we gonna get into that next so don't move it's the breakfast club Good morning. the breakfast club morning everybody it's dj nv charlamagne the guy we are the breakfast club we got our co-host jess hilarious here with us today what up, what up? now uh cardi was performing last night glorilla was in town and cardi pulled up and they did that live she killed it i don't know if you've seen the footage but they killed it i did see that she didn't even have to rap her uh verse they was rapping the words for her yeah ah that's like one of the hottest songs now shout out to Barty. Now Barty, you said you coming up here. I, I think you said in April, so we waiting for you. Well, if her if her second album drops in April, she uh, gonna come host for the week. Okay. Hey. If she puts it out, it'll be five. It'll be five year anniversary of uh, invasion of privacy. So maybe. All right. Well, let's get to the rumors. Let's find out if Jess Hilarious is capping. Hey yo, it's Jess with the mess. Am I new to Child the ghetto. This is the rumor report. Am I new to real? On the Breakfast Club. Woo! Honey, it's ghetto up in here. 
Yes, ghetto, ghetto, nothing but the ghetto. Master P responds to Jess Hilarious, says she's spreading fake news. Jess, are you lying on Master P? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Hell no, not today. Don't ever play with me like that. Listen, Fat Troll responded, but this is what Master P said about Fat Troll. I didn't even see where this nigga had came back at even one of us. I, I'm telling you, I didn't even see that. But anyway. It was on Facebook. It, oh, Yo, that, see, that's some old, that, that, that's that old nigga stuff, man. That, how you gonna respond to us on MySpace and we didn't even... How you can't do that? That's what Facebook is to me. It's like MySpace. I don't even run my own Facebook account. I don't see what you're saying, man. Anyway, look. So, he says about Fat Trout, I wish Fat Trout the best, but he has owed nothing from me or my company. The only business we ever did was put out a free mixtape on LiveMixtapes.com back in 2013. Now, Fat Trout had a problem with that because he said free. Free. Niggas can't get music for free in prison. And the reason why he know that is because he stay in prison. Actually, he's that's what he said. He just left prison and he's seen on tablets his music. And you cannot get that music for free. So you're, in fact, getting paid from music that you said that you never made nothing. You know, you never made no money from him or nothing like that. Or mm -hmm. Now, in Master P's defense and in any other label's defense, they do put a lot of money into these artists. That's I'm not, gonna, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what Master P said. I mean, I said that yeah. yesterday, but that's what ex executives do. They invest a lot in these artists. They be yeah. wanting their uh, money back, rightfully so. No, for, no, no, for sure, for sure. Um, so I do understand that. And I don't really know everything in their contract, mm -hmm. but in Jessalaria's contract, let's get to that. Look, he said, for the cowards hiding behind their computers enforcing fake news. I do have Jess Larry's contract from five years ago for I got the hook up to and the copy of the check that was cashed and paid. She was joking about not I was joking. Hey uh. <laughs> hey yo, I ain't, I ain't read this part. Like, she was just joking. She be playing. Y'all know her. <laughs> Stop playing with me, huh? <laughs> yo, she was joking about a second check that was never in her contract. That's the narrative they ran with for clickbait and fake headlines. Thank God for receipts. You think out of everybody out there right now, I'm going to come after you for clickbait and fake headlines. I don't have to do that, sir. Now, he playing around with me because I never said it was a, a it was never like a second check. It was money paid up front mm -hmm. and then it was supposed to have been another 15000 Oh, so you didn't get the other half of your money? Yeah, I didn't get the other half of my money. Stop playing with me like this was check one, check two. No. Could it no. be a problem with accounting? I doubt my, you know, I doubt Master P's doing the accounting. Could it be that? He has to sign be? off on it, though. It's like anything Absolutely. else. You got to sign off. Like you, Charlamagne, when you pay people, you got to sign off on yeah, it. Yeah, but could it be a mix up? You know, maybe? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Ain't no mix up. And you're going to stop playing around. Even for uh, I got the hookup to, you didn't even pay your son for his role. Yeah. What? You didn't, How do you you didn't know even this? pay your son for his role. I'm just with the mess. My news is real, Charlamagne. Don't play. That's why you got here. That's why I'm, that's why I'm up here. You can't question me. Look, you didn't pay your son. He worked hard. He put his money into the... the like you took my man's money. You did. We'll say allegedly. We'll say allegedly just in case. Yeah, that's their family business. Yeah, like I said. So, yeah, we're we not doing it. The news is real, like I said. So, stop stop playing with me, sir. Really stop, Percy. We're not going to do this. But I, I will say... And yeah, I also will say... Yo, I've heard so many good things about you. People have said things. I've said good things about you. So he's, stop he's a trying great to black act man. like. Yeah, stop trying to act like this is just the I hate Percy train. I hate Master P train. Like, no, if you do a great amount, a great amount of good, mm -hmm. but you still do sneaky stuff too. Like, you're not. You know what I'm saying? I would have said sneaky ish, but you know we can't cuss like that. But like, don't, don't. Don't do that. I don't like that. I do not like that. You do good things, but you do got some skeletons up in your closet, sir. Pay these people I mean, and pay me too. Yeah, I mean, everybody does, but people, you know, I think some things might fall fall through the cracks in business sometimes. Yeah, and then yeah. and then also, I'm the type, and believe this and be, believe this if you want or not, like, even though I'm just with the mess, I still don't put everything out there because, for one, these days... People will use it. They'll sit on information and mm -hmm. they'll use it at the right time or whatever, whatever. That ain't even me. Mm -hmm. Yo, I felt like, yeah, he eventually paid me. It could happen. Mm -hmm. and, you know, nah, this he, is probably, five years. he probably won't. He probably yeah, won't he pay. Probably, you. He still ain't. You won't yeah. get your That's why he's gonna keep doing them seminars. You know what I'm saying? Getting money, but, taking money from people, acting like that's gonna get them rich. No, no, it's not. Like that's why you like 
That yeah, we're gonna leave that alone. Damn, he, Jess. Did you just call Master P Grant Cardone? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> just the black one. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Like, stop playing. Stop Master playing P is a, is a great black man. Yeah. I will say that. But if, you go. know, if, if y'all do have some business discrepancies, I hope y'all work that out. Absolutely. I will absolutely. say that, but that is a uh, part of the practice I see when 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 people get new artists and new comedians and new producers. Mm -hmm. That is part of the game where they feel like they can give you the front half and not give you the back end and keep it moving. It happens all the time. All the time. Just er so crazy. Irv Gotti did it to me. So I ain't even gonna sit there and lie. I produce so, a record. So Irv Gotti owe you money? He definitely owe me ten grand. Man, what is going oh, on? See, definitely owe me ten grand. <laughs> Hey, what, what OG executive owed me some money? I need yeah, to call I, somebody out. I remember, uh, shout to Mono. Me and Mono produced a record for uh, Murder, Inc. back in the day. And I got my front end and I never got it back in. And they just was like, keep it moving. So I kept it moving. But I just remember, that's just one of the things you just keep it, you just keep it in your pocket and remember. Well, there are three sides to every story. It's yours, Jess's, Master P's, Romeo's, and Irv Gotti's. <laughs> Five stories, y'all. That's five, five stories. <laughs> and Fat Troll, yo. It's Fat Troll, too, yo. Stop playing, yo. Oh, man, so I just came home from jail, and I'm going back this weekend, and I'm going to see if <laughs> yo stay in jail. That's how I know that they not, uh, that they, they not getting oh, that music for free. My bad. My bad. My bad. Oh, All right, man. moving on. Kanye West finds new legal team to defend. Y'all see how I said new? Yeah, bring that bottom out. Kanye West finds new legal team to defend him in 7000 I mean, $7 million legal battle after previous attorney dropped him over his anti-Semitic remarks. Kanye that's, West owes me $10,000 from- Come on, um, shut up. From, Yo, shut up, man. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> he owes me $10,000 So for after, something. <laughs> after his former lawyer, you know, she quit, he got a new one. Now, the, the lawyer that he got, his new lawyer is defending him in the new $7 million lawsuit brought on by Phantom Labs. All right, so this is so interesting. Phantom Labs claimed that they worked on projects with Kanye West between June 2021 and uh, March of 2022. The performance deals included his Sunday services, four of them, his listening event for Donda 2, uh, Free Larry Hoover event, and the pre-production for his canceled 2022 Coachella performance. Now, Kanye, you know you are wrong, sir, because he denied all allegations, accused Phantom performing so poorly that it would be unreasonable and unfair to continue payment. So he paid them... That's the choir? Yeah, it, listen. Oh, Kanye ain't paid a quiet? Yo, it's like he started paying them, but he still owed them like over $6 million. So he, he did start, but then he stopped. He said they performed so poorly, he don't see why he need to pay them the rest. Now, I feel like... Technically, a quiet should only get 10%, because you only got to get 10% no, of your time. No, no, that, no, no, you never know, shut up. But I see where he gets his logic from. Master P, Man, I mean, you, you gotta, gotta pay. You gonna pay here, you and then I'm, I'm gonna stop paying. You, you gotta stop. It's, unf it's unfair. <laughs> I didn't like stop. the second scene, Jess. I'm not paying you for that. You got to stop. <laughs> Oh Salute goodness. to Master P, man. All right. Well, that was just <laughs> with the God. mess. Jesus. Nah, but they really, Not you know, Kanye, and, and the problem with, the, with when you owe somebody money is usually when they start in their career, so you really need that money the most. Yeah. Like, I was looking forward to that money. Yeah. You know, and I had to split it with Mono, so it was it, we, we were splitting the money, and we just never got it. Now, Definitely. I don't know if Envy News is real. Now, mine is real. <laughs> I don't know even. No, mine is, you know, mine is factual. Factual, factual. You can't even This is beige that. to the rage, and my news is real. <laughs> <laughs> to the face. You know what? When we come back, we got front page news. We got to tell you about uh, Joe Biden. He did it again. And we'll talk about it when we he come back. Me it it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. WWPR FMHD1 New York. And our heart radio station. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Jess Hilarious, joining us. She said, we, she said we last day in her. She was like, I get some water. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all last day in me. I ain't even get the extra for nothing to drink the first two days. I came in, Envy not here, ain't no water, ain't no shots, nothing. I'm like, damn. You part of the family now. Whatever you need, right. Jeff. What you need? You know anything for you. I want a shot and a blunt. Anything for you. She want a shot and a blunt. I gave yeah. you weed already. <laughs> Let's get in some front page news. Well, Joe Biden does it again, which is uh, very strange. So, you know, uh, he had his doctor's appointment uh, about, a, what, three weeks ago, and he said everything was perfectly fine. Lies. His skills was great. It was no problem. Uh, yesterday, as he was walking up Air Force One, he tripped and stumbled and fell again. Oh, I've never no. done that. Now, I've stumbled coming down. I've never stumbled going. Oh, you That's know what? what I was saying. Coming down Maybe is easy to fall, but going up is kind of. No, 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 no. He fell up. <laughs> No, you can stumble up because your foot can catch like uh, catch one of the steps. I be feeling bad for him, though. I don't like to see him fall. I feel like he has no more falls in him. 
<laughs> after every time he fall, he get dumber. I'm telling you, it's like it's like it's like a shake up in his head. Like yo, I just but I be feeling so bad. Like I don't. All people be. I mean, old people be off limits for me. I don't care if he is a president. He just off limits. He He's old. elderly, right? Like you he feel old. bad even I critiquing just feel him. Bad. Yeah, yes. I feel no. Bad. If he wasn't the president, you'd have nothing to say about him. But being that he's the president, you gotta critique him. But man, he yeah. he beyond granddaddy age. Grand he, what? He's Grandmother, granddaddy, granddaddy he's like fifties and sixties now. He ninety seven. Oh my god. He's like great granddaddy then. Mm. He should be on the front of something. Like you know how like in front of what? <laughs> like a product. Like if he don't fall, if he, stand, if he can stand up long enough. But you know what? This is I'm um, this is gonna sound like a joke, but you know that that machine where you sit and it takes you up the stairs? Oh yeah, he, 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 it should be one of those on Air Force Ones to just just to make sure he's good. You Definitely, know what I mean? he give the appearance of being weak then, and people wouldn't 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 appreciate. Oh, but him that. falling, well, him falling, falling all down. Right. But that's why they look strong. But that's why they try to cover those things up. Like they don't want us to see that. Like yeah. he, he he always has to look like he's strong because come twenty twenty four when he's ninety nine years old, like yeah. you're not gonna want to vote for somebody that you perceive as weak. Yeah. That's why they lie to us and tell us that his bill of health is good. How his bill of health good <laughs> for my cholesterol a little bit high at 44 right. years old? That don't even make no damn sense. I don't know. All right. Also, if you haven't heard, uh, Nipsey Hussle's killer. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. Eric Holder was sentenced to 60 years in prison. Go to the audio. In the Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles, Department 104, the people of the state of California versus Eric Ronald Holder Jr. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Eric Ronald Holder Jr., guilty of the crime of first degree murder of Ermius Ashkadon in violation of Penal Code Section 187, subsection A, a felony, as charged in count one of the indictment. Mm, 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 mm. Nobody wins in these situations, man. Mm -hmm. One black man going to prison forever. Mm -hmm. Another black man gone forever for absolutely right. nothing yeah. other than ego and unhealed trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rest in peace again to Nipsey Hussle. Always. You know, love to his family. Uh, and lastly, uh, a fifth person is cured of HIV after stem cell uh, transplant. That's what research, uh, researchers are saying, and we uh, have audio as they break it down. Mm. Researchers say a fifth person has been cured of HIV after a high-risk stem cell transplant. The findings were published in the journal Nature after a 53-year-old man in Germany showed no detectable virus in his body after stopping his HIV medications for more than four years. Mm. In this particular case, this was a 53-year-old male who had been previously diagnosed with HIV. In 2011, he was unfortunately diagnosed with leukemia, for which he was given chemo therapy and a stem cell transplant. Now, what's important about this case is that his stem cell transplant came from a donor who was naturally resistant against HIV. And as you said, since 2018, he has not needed any HIV medication or treatment and has been continuously tested and there have been no detectable signs of the HIV virus. We're dropping a clues bombs with Magic Johnson finally sharing the secret. No, shut up. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was ready to agree. I can't be disagreeing with anything, Charlamagne. No, you definitely can't. What you mean? <laughs> what you mean? Please shut up, yo. No. <laughs> God. But I'm, I'm I'm glad that there is some type of treatment that is actually working and that could cure a lot of people because you know they say that the rates are getting increasingly higher in, in a lot of our areas, a lot yeah, of black areas. So definitely. the fact that it's always been that way, yeah, and but it continues the, to grow. The thing is, the high risk thing is like, yo, like, could you almost die getting that? You know what I'm saying? What you mean the the, the, the treatment? The, the treatment. I mean yeah. the, the high. Yeah, because she said a uh, high risk and she said high like high. Like real bad, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, cause you can live with HIV. Yes, you can. Correct. But they like, got medications for it, like but, prep. Uh, right. I see the commercials on TV all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to die trying to cure it. I get what you're saying. Rather than right. being okay, you know. I get what you're saying. With, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just, I don't know. I be back and forth in my mind about things like that. If you have a disease that you can actually live with, I mean, I know right. I, until until you have it. If you don't have, it, you got to mind your business or whatever. You can't really speak too much on it, but. I don't, you know, I just the conspiracy I don't, theorist risk, in me, high risk. The mm -hmm. conspiracy theorist in me feels like they've always had a cure. Why mm. they Why they are giving it to us now? I don't. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they don't need HIV anymore because they got a bunch of other things they can kill us with. I Absolutely. don't know. Absolutely, like a nuke. <laughs> you go, I'm man. Telling you. <laughs> you why, why is this? It's been on my mind, man. All right. All right. That is front page news. Now, when we come back, Tyler 
Oh, what is his last name? Lepley? It's oh, Lepley. Oh, Tyler Actually, Lepley. Tyler Lepley. He knows all, all the men's last names. I don't know nothing about no Lepley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I do know Tyler. That's my guy, though. Yes. Yeah, y'all was Tyler in the movie. Me and Tyler remember? did a movie together a, eight years ago called Ringside. You had a couple words in the movie. You remember? I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's only like before. three words. That's what they said. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have more than three words, but I just don't remember the scenes. But you definitely, it was called words, Ringside. Man. It was a Russ Parr film. Oh, okay. Okay. TV right. One original, baby. All right. Well, we gonna kick it with Tyler. Don't Lepley like y'all come back. At me. <laughs> don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. For this role, this right. this different TV show, and you know maybe like three or four auditions into it, we had like some type of callbacks. They brought us to Atlanta, and um, he was in the middle of shooting something while he was coming down to look at the auditions. Mm. And anybody that knows him, like he don't got no time for nothing. He's yeah. doing twelve things at once. You yeah. think he's Jamaican? He got mm -hmm. fifty different jobs. Right. So you know, on his lunch break from shooting something with Medea, he came in to check out what was going on. He <laughs> <laughs> was kind of crazy. Right. <laughs> but it was just like, you know, it put into perspective how hard he works, right? Yeah. Mm. And, and how much tunnel vision you need to really get done what you're trying to do in this business. And that was for the, what the haves and the have nots, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. a long time ago, yeah. And so when did you get P-Valley? P-Valley was probably like, we did nine seasons of the have and have nots. I think we went off the air maybe in like 2020. We probably stopped filming maybe 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. And I had booked it maybe like 2019. So for the mm -hmm. last season of the have and have nots and the first season of P-Valley, we were shooting them at the same time. Mm -hmm. oh, which okay. was crazy because back then in the first season, we shot on Tyler Perry Studios. So like oh, I, I was having a couple days that were crazy where like, you know, we would... We, I would shoot a 10 hour, 11 hour day over here, you know, six to seven over here, mm. go take a shower and clock in eight to 6 a.m. for P-Valley. Mm -hmm. wow. But it was oh, just wow. like. And then that's two different roles and two different sure. scripts and two different, yeah. whoa. Yeah. yeah, it was It was definitely, um, you know, it definitely w w was difficult, you know, for those few days. But this, these are the problems that we that we asked for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you, you have time to do push-ups. I don't <laughs> do no push-ups no more. <laughs> <laughs> in, between, in between sets, you know? Yeah, yeah. Now, as for, you know, you, you say you were playing football. And this is a question that I ask every football player or anybody that's played football. Would you allow your child to play football? Man. Especially because you had a, a bad back surgery, so yeah, for sure. I had yeah knee, uh, knee surgeries, like plenty of concussions. It's, man, it's it's different nowadays, you know, with all the science and everything that we know. So I would probably say, I mean, I want to, I want to be a dream killer. I'm yeah. gonna let him play, yeah. you know. I want to be tough and whatnot. I got two boys now. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, oh, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. But I do think that, like, you know, I would, I would be a fool to not apply some of the things that we know now. Mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't want him to play my position. I was a running back. It's just constant contact. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little wide receiver or quarterback, something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. All right, we got more with Tyler Lepley when we come back, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got our co-host, Jess Hilarious, joining us. And we have Tyler Lepley in the building. Charlemagne? In P Valley, we getting season three of that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, oh, it's I feel like it's my show. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like absolutely. This is like, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm like you asking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, season season three got green lit. Shout out to Katori Hall. You yes. know, for that. Matter of fact, did I, so look, I heard when they was auditioning, when they were doing the screen test with the chemistry read mm -hmm. for who's gonna be Big Bone, I heard that your name was in the middle. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, your girl stole that from hey, me, man. Hey, shout, hey, shout out to me. My bones ain't that big, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> miracle Wall. Miracle Wall. Yeah, 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 Miracle Wall. Yeah, 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 man, she always take a stop. Damn, Tyler made man. that call. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Somebody said, yo, man. <laughs> yo, I, they I came to talk to who you want, Jess or Miracle? Yo. He picked Miracle. Damn, Damn it, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Jesus. No, no, Damn it wasn't it, like man. that, though. It was about <laughs> now, he met Miracle on set, though. So it, 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 Yeah, I met her before that. No, oh, I Damn, didn't say you already knew her. Damn. I, I auditioned for that four times, yo. I, <laughs> shit, man, I auditioned for four times. The first season, the second season. Yo, what's up, Katori? What's up with you? Yeah, they saying I can't. I don't got the the accent. They they saying that I that you they don't be saying. Where you gotta that be down from? There. Where you gotta be from? Mississippi, a place that ain't even real. Like no, Mississippi <laughs> ain't real. real. What but you mean? Chuck Alisa, that, Chuck that ain't yeah, even real. Yeah, yeah, I get what you saying. How, you know what I'm saying? You can How turn you gonna that say, yo, you, that's, like, that's like me auditioning for Black Panther, like, oh, you gotta talk like they do in Wakanda. Where, where that's at? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, that, but I, I get it, because I, I can't be country. But so that's like I what I was be, talking I about can't. earlier with Leia Daniels Butler. It's like mm -hmm. she can't, continues to go back. You've been yeah. there four times. That yeah. means they like you. Yep, they, yep. So they're gonna keep bringing you back. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, I just, I had heard I had heard that, because Miracle was the only one that actually did the chemistry read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had asked, like, who else? Because a lot of times with chemistry read, they have a few people, so we can see who the Right. Um, but I, I think the only one, the only other person they brought up was you. Yeah. 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 So this is before y'all was a couple and all of that. Yeah, yeah. So I remember I was shooting the first season of Harlem, 
And um, congrats on that too. Yeah, appreciate yeah, yeah, it. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Yep, we got the new season on right now on Amazon mm-hmm. Prime. You know, mm-hmm. had to drop that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I remember we were shooting the first season, and I had a, I had a day off, and Katori hit me, and she was like, "Yeah, do you mind? Um, do you mind just just doing some chemistry reads with us so we can see the chemistry between uh, Diamond and you know his potential love interest? We didn't know her name was gonna be Big Bone at the time. Right. Mm-hmm. I think it was maybe in like maybe in like March or whatever year that was, 2020. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had met her on Facetime. And then I remember a couple months later, I had showed up to my friend's uh, dinner party, or he he was having a, a birthday party. He was having a dinner. Unbeknownst to me, we had a mutual we had a mutual friend. She was there. Mm-hmm. And between the time I had met her on Facetime and that point, she had booked it. So now I knew she was about to be right. you know working with me. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like to transition into this business. You know, mm-hmm. it can be a yeah. lot. Mm-hmm. You know, coming from where she's coming from into something like this, especially something like P Valley, yeah. you gotta have an accent. There's so many things yeah. you gotta have over there. You know, she was just my she was my friend at first, and really mm-hmm. that's how I was going into it. Mm-hmm. Let me just kind of be like you know, big bro, and kind of just you know what I'm saying. Shoot oh, we just had this combo. Big bro, that's why we don't do big bro. We just had this combo. You was big bro. Tyler, you was big bro. He was big bro. He was talking about. That's what you don't allow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that yeah. I just kind of went to school her a little bit, or just just be, um, you know, be any help that she that she may need. Because right. you know, 95 percent of her scenes are with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like the, everything I go through on Harlem with Megan. All my stuff was with her. Mm-hmm. So you know, it behooves us to have a, a cool relationship. Yeah. You don't want to work with somebody you don't like. Right. That. No, no. Um, but yeah, we did. You yeah, man, she, we we hit it off, and we were just. We just clicked so hard that it just it just was what it was. So by right. the time we started shooting on set, it already was was what it was. Yeah. So how did that work in this era? Because to me, that sounds perfectly normal. But then you see all of these situations where like an employee hooked up with an employee. Yeah. Now it's a yeah. scandal. Like like mm-hmm. what is that? Y'all got to disclose that to the production of the studio. Or? Yeah, um, you know it's it's about it's about like communication. I think is is your, is your mm-hmm. best friend and just kind of mm-hmm. knowing what's going on and also and also like compartmentalizing what's going on it's like yeah that's my girl but when we show up on set we're here to do work that's right. Right. but that what happens when, when, when you and Miracle at home mm-hmm. arguing about something right could be mm-hmm. something y'all yeah. arguing because every couple gets to it mm-hmm. yeah. and you gotta go to work the next day y'all not really talking but now y'all gotta turn it on yeah. how is that I know how to do that. You see, you better get right. <laughs> but the she know how to do against it. me. It's on. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. No, nah, but uh, all jokes aside, yeah. Like, um, has that happened? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for I mean, sure. but Big Bro tore her that. Yeah. So we already, you know what I'm saying? We already got <laughs> into that real quick. No, we so did, yeah, um, You know, we we got the type of connection where, like, you know, like this shit on the surface always rolls off the sleeve. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like we ain't never been nothing crazy like that. I mean, you know, we Your get there. Your wife's always in this, this that rules off. What you just say, yo? <laughs> uh, <laughs> say that again, yo. I don't know, man. Come to me, mama. You gotta catch it. You gotta catch it. You gotta catch it when you catch it. You feel me? You know, whatever was on your shoulder rolls off the sleeve. Like, that's what it was. It was so smooth. We didn't even know if it sounded. If it was right, we just like, bro. That's like, yo, that reminds me of that. I don't know if he said it with y'all or Big Boy. Remember the A-Book? He said that. He said, sometimes you gotta think about things how you don't want to think about things. He said, what that mean? He said, I don't know. It just sounds good. <laughs> it makes yeah. sense though. How does yeah. she feel when you got to do scenes with Miss Megan? Good. <laughs> Ooh. You know she's um she's a she's a professional too, man. She understands yeah. that. You know, as much as she's a professional, she understands that I'm a professional. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's and she and it's it's also great that she's been in some of those. You know, she's she's been in a scene like that with mm-hmm. me, and she's been on set. She sees how it is, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. she kind of understands that. You know, it's it's a it's a muscle that you turn on and turn off. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's not even you know we got. All type of all type of sound people and cameras, and it's like it's way more awkward than you than it looks yeah. on TV, mm-hmm. right? Know? Even so if it's your girl or not, it's still yeah, yeah, it's for still sure. That how was how was the first time you had to do that though? The first sex scene or the first love scene? Like, I should say. Period in life? No, not. I mean, on on film. <laughs> no, I'm saying like, <laughs> like when I'm like, but you asking that man? No, I'm saying like it started. Not because he's trying to ask because I mean the first time is just weird. Yeah, yeah, for he sure. Like, have, it, was, it got hard. <laughs> what you want to oh, ask him, yo? What about your little ass scene in that movie? Did you have time to even get hard in the scene? No, that's it. Go ahead, Tyler. No, no, Why? Is that because I've been, I've, I've been, you know, I've been doing it, you know. Uh, uh, with the Lord's blessing, man, I've been doing it for a while. Yeah. So it was probably like, yeah, even a decade ago, probably one of the first couple seasons of the Have and the Have Nots. Mm-hmm. And it was it was definitely very awkward. You know, as as an actor, you kind of got to figure out, um, <clears throat> you know, what your process is and how you break into things and break out of it. You know, to do it without like you know drinking in the bag. Yeah. And shit, you know what I'm saying yeah. for real. So it was like you know figuring all that out was was a learning process, but it was it was cool. You know, I was on I was on set with professionals, and you know, I kind of learned how to be. Um, you know when you when you have a new 
people come on set you know mm -hmm. right. supposed to welcome them with open arms have open communication yeah. is, this, is this is this okay is this not okay right. and that's how you kind of get through it until you figure out how to do it and be comfortable in it yeah. is social media a gift and a curse because you are like a yeah. you like an internet <laughs> darling but then it's just like you see everything that that that, that y'all got going on mm -hmm. yeah you know was that new for you yeah for sure you know because i had never um i've always been a, like a private person mm -hmm. and um you know that's definitely one of the one of the downsides with being with being in the open about anything it doesn't matter if it's my girl mm -hmm. or my kids my parents you know what i'm saying you you open things up to to the, the trolls in this world right and it's like the one the one reason i feel like i've always been um private you know people think mm -hmm. it's, it's secret it's not secrecy, right. it's privacy. Right. And the, the one reason I've always been, um, you know, private with my private life is, is, you know, I'm just conscious of the fact that this is the life that I chose and everything that comes with it, I'm cool with. You know what I'm saying? My family didn't choose this, right. you know? Yeah. So, like, I've always been conscious of, uh, I've always been conscious of, you, you know, just, just that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So, when, you know, back to your question, you know, that, that, is, that is part of the downside with it. It's like, you know, it's, it's great to win in front of everybody, but if you're in front of everybody and you lose, mm -hmm. you're going to talk about that too. Yeah. Right. So it's like, it's just one of these things. Yeah. yeah. All right, we got more with Tyler Lepley when we come back, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got our co-host, Jess Hilarious, joining us. And we have Tyler Lepley in the building. How do you stay focused? Because, you know... Ladies love you, so I'm sure they're in the DMs. I'm sure they're, they're hollering at you. So how do you stay focused from the beginning when you're a trainer? Because when you think about light skin brothers, it's usually me, you. What? Who else you get? What? Uh, what? Well, Steph, ain't nobody asking about yo, you. Nobody Steph Curry, said, oh, Drake. Usually, ain't never heard that one. It's usually us four. It's usually us four. Yeah. Usually four. Yeah. So. <laughs> I ain't so, never so heard that. Brother, so um, back, back to you. Say. So how do you stay focused, bro? <laughs> Um, yeah, I get, again, like internally, I'm just never too far away from the beginning, man. I just, I don't. So you was never out there wilding. He was. <laughs> what? You was Wait, back what? in Philly, getting into the ruts. Yeah, yeah, was I was. Back, no, I've been wilding before, yeah. But I think that, um, you know, I'm just still close to like, you know, where I started. And I just remember some of those roadblocks. Like I couldn't figure it out. I didn't have a passion. I wasn't, I wasn't really good at something. You know what I'm saying? I was mm -hmm. kind of just like aimless. I was kind of lost in a sense. Mm -hmm. So to, you know, fast forward 12 years and, and be so locked in, like. Be so passionate about something to the point where I would do it for free, but I get paid handsomely for it. Yeah. And you know, want to put the work in. I'm just, I'm just in such a blessed position. You know, and I also always think about that analogy: the man in the arena. None of the problems of being in that arena really affect me because at the end of the day, I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in the arena. It's easy for me to focus and lock in. Yeah. Now, Renee sent me a song. I didn't know you rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just dropped something last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been doing music as long as I've been, as long as I've been acting. But um, you wow. know, it's just that it's uh, acting popped off first. You know what I'm saying? I've been an artist since as far back as I can remember. Yeah. Um, they, but they both their own separate beasts. They gonna come at their own time. Yeah. But it's like if if something doesn't happen, it ain't never gonna be for the, right. you know, the lack of me not giving 100. Mm percent So you know, I've been dropping. We just gonna we gonna keep pushing into the pop. Run. So Michael B. Jordan gotta move over and Drake now. Yeah, for sure, both because, of them. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> gotta move over too. But there's plenty of room at the table. Table, you know, it's no, all it good, is, it is. I'm just saying, you, you Yo, come and you, over, let me get you, that. All right, well, I gotta ask you this. So, your ex fiance, um, was, my, my girlfriend, yeah, it was my ex girlfriend. Oh, your we ex girlfriend, were, oh, yeah, okay, so y'all never, never no, okay, yeah. cool. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, so your ex girl, I, I remember it was something you know going on, know each with, other, right? Yeah, definitely yeah. know each yeah. other. Um, Miracle Watts had said something about you know, like she takes on your kids, it's her kids, <laughs> like. Mm -hmm. How is that situation now? Because I know that April got mad at that. She got yeah, mad sure. at that. How is that now, though? Um, you know, it's 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 a process. You know, it's like yeah. it's definitely better than it was. Yeah. We still got a little way to go. As much as I would not like it to be like that, you know, I can't rush anything because it's, this is, you know, again, the problems of the man in the arena. It just it, it kind of happens like this. The one thing yeah. I will say is that again, that's that's the mother of two of my children. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I have nothing but love and respect for Absolutely. her. So you know, I give her grace and patience as she as she figures out what she got to feel herself through. Right. And you know, it, it does. It doesn't help that everything's like you talked about. It doesn't help mm -hmm. that everything mm -hmm. is in the public eye. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. like I kind of understand where it's coming from. You know, but I would want for somebody to treat my kid like that, like my kid is theirs. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And you know, to to get back to that part, it's like yeah. you know, Miracle does such a great job of just loving me for everything and yeah, uh, just 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 the fullness of who I am and everything that comes with it. For sure. You know, it brings me back to that. I don't know if it was a meme or something went viral on uh, on Instagram, and it was about like you know, the dad came home, I only got. McDonald's for his kid. You know yeah, what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, that was big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
want that or like no. do you want someone who really loves all three right. like it's exactly right. so I right. want my kids eating healthier than McDonald's right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want to feed your kids exactly. McDonald's fine <laughs> sure. but if you okay. can't afford it you can't <laughs> afford McDonald's you can only get for one yeah. for one kid yeah yeah that's one thing I didn't know about her people may not know that from the outside looking in because the package looks like what it looks like yeah she is just man she got she got the biggest heart and she really just like a, a, a down south homegrown girl at the end of the day mm-hmm. so she really has everything that I need as a man for mm-hmm. sure you in love 100% mm-hmm. yeah is it hard to love out loud I guess when you have an ex like you like you know you bought we saw you bought a binge for, for, for Miracle on Instagram yeah yeah she got that G-Wagon come on now G-Wagon sir come on now put some respect on his name sir come on shout out to Bird man are you afraid are you are you afraid to put stuff like that out there because it might piss off the ex? Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't re- I don't really think about it like that. You know, she's gotten push gifts too. It just wasn't yeah. in, you know it wasn't in front of everybody, and it was at a different you know place in my in my career and right. stuff. And, and he didn't have G wagon money at the time. He didn't have G wagon money at the time. You know, she I, I gave her I gave her equity in the house that we had before. So when mm-hmm. I sold it, she you know she had some money. And, oh, that's dope. You know, right, she right. she done taking care of everything when we was together, and yeah. even when we weren't, she still had a full time nanny because right. she's got a job that requires her to be away for like twelve hours a day mm-hmm. so like even if it's not what you see on Instagram you know I provide for all of my family right. you know what I'm saying Right. but yeah it can be you know so, social media can make things challenging and you can't for sure. be scared to not scared but like can't feel away so much like of watching what he do in this relationship because of his past relationship you feel right. me like yeah. he still if you want to love loud you know because maybe mm-hmm. this girl is different maybe you know mm-hmm. April was was uh, private, you know. Miracles different, so it's yeah. like you adjust. So I I don't I don't. Not that you asked me that, but I'm just saying <laughs> I don't think that you should move stay because you you're know, a woman. So. It's a woman's perspective. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah like, sure. nah, that, You know what, what was then was then. This is now. So. Yeah, and there was yeah. love, and there was love in both scenarios. Well, this is definitely. just you know, I'm in, I'm in love with Miracle now. We have we have a family, and this is this is how I'm moving. How do you do for birthdays and Valentine's if you done did the G wagon just for a push? Well, not just oh my for god, a push man! I've been, I've been, <laughs> I was I was making I was making a joke with my family recently like the last five months is like loaded up like mm-hmm. everybody's birthday Valentine's Day Christmas mm-hmm. it's like it's all um, compounded into like this five month run so it's like Phew. I'm gonna need them three jobs now. Right, 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 right. Bill's coming. Yeah, he said he just it's dropped a mixtape. Y'all get it? Yeah, just dropped a mixtape. Matter of fact, yeah. But yeah, I don't. I don't. Um, you know, I, I, what I give, I give out of the goodness of my heart. I don't really take tabs of it. You know, it's, it's nice. You may get, you may get a G wagon one day. You may get a conversation another day. You know? mm-hmm. Some flowers or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't really pay attention to it. I you better not come in no damn conversation for a birthday <laughs> anniversary <laughs> or birthday. Christmas if you know what I know. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Let me talk. Happy Valentine's Day. Let's have a talk. I love how the game has changed for y'all, though, because back in the day, I say about 15 years ago, they'd have told you, Tyler, don't tell nobody you in a relationship. For sure, yeah. You know what I mean? These yeah. women have to feel like they can have you. I've yeah. heard that so many times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I have. But, you know, I, I've never, I've never lived... I've never lived for for anybody else. So, you know, right. I think it's um, one thing I, I love about Harlem that I, like I see this through line of people chasing the life that that they see for themselves as opposed to the life that others see for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I connect with that because I've always been like that. So I don't really listen to that too much because yeah. it can be difficult. Got you. I just last question for me. How do you pronounce your son's name? Uh, Zai. Zai. Yeah, okay. Zai. It's spelled X I L E I. Oh, it was, yeah, Zai Lay. Lay is his middle name. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, her, in her family, uh, everybody got the, the middle name Lee, and she wanted to do something different. Mm. So, Zai Lay. And I kind of like how it played off of Lepley. Zai Lay, Lepley kind of yeah. sound light skin fly. They, you know, definitely, so. definitely. There you go. Definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> There you go. What, what do you want to do next, Tyler? Like, what, what, what do you want to do next, ultimately? I mean, you said you want to you, you want to knock Michael B. Jordan out. You want to push Drake out. <laughs> yeah, you want to get Denzel out. 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 You want to get Denzel out. No, no yeah. I'm, just trying, I'm, dry, I'm just trying to get to where they at. That's all. Oh, okay. all right. um, no, I think for me, it's like, man, I just got to I gotta, I gotta check off everything that I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? And not let the obstacles get in the way. You know, I feel like in the tug of war between, like, the, the heart and the mind sometimes we overthink things and we we get in our own way mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know so I don't the, the short answer is right now I'm um I'm producing a movie I got you know the music dropping we got mm-hmm. uh, P Valley in Harlem mm-hmm. seasons three coming up so it's like you know that's gonna take up most of the 12 months but it's like you know as I look into the crystal ball you know the sky is the limit and I don't want to put a limit on myself mm-hmm. you know because I would have never thought in a million years mm-hmm. When I was going through that rut, that I would be sitting right here with y'all. Really? You know what I'm saying? Like For never. Sure. Yeah. Like, I couldn't. I couldn't, bro. I'd, like right before I came out, man, I was. I went around the room, grabbed a little jewelry here, and I was at the pawn shop. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't have. I didn't have fifty dollars to to my name. Mm-hmm. So it's like to see where it, it went if you just follow what you're feeling. That's what I'm on. I'm trying to. I'm trying to just get to to 
you know, where where my destiny is taking me. You That's know, crazy because I mean? you a running back. Running backs can always see the hole. Yeah, you for know sure. What I mean? yeah. It's a crazy analogy. Yeah, absolutely. So you're producing a film. You are like holding auditions. No, no, I'm I'm, uh, I'm doing it with with. Um, he what? said no, Jess. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, get this he Jess. said that for me and you. For me and you. That means sorry, you don't I come met, up there either. I meant, um, I meant not yet. Nah, <laughs> you meant what you said. He said no. That can't happen. Hold on. 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 Yo. It's the Breakfast Club that's oh, all the y'all. Hey. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Jess Hilarious, in the building. Big Jess. All right, it's time to get to the rumors. Jess, what are we talking about? Oh. Put your damn headphones on. You, see, you go outside and do one little <laughs> smoke like, break. Where the fuck do we go? I don't know where it goes. Dump! Dump! I didn't even smoke. That's the problem. You got to dump. Oh, my goodness. Did you dump? <laughs> Did he dump? I don't know if you heard it. <laughs> Jesus you on the Christ. air, Jess. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> she don't got her headphones on, so she can't God, hear you. I told her to use my head. headphones. My there you got them. You got them on now? Yeah, and I still can't hear nobody. You can't hear nobody. Turn up the volume. Mm -hmm. That's because I said all them in Can you hear now? They're playing me today. T turn her volume up, Red. Why y'all just go. use my headphones? Get in the water. She did. You hear you now? No. Nope, go not back, not. go back. Yeah, oh, goodness. it's okay. Let's see. Let me see. Now, here she, wow. here she go. This is the thing about live radio. We are live. It's and we good. got this, it's this new, new studio and things happen sometimes. What happened to the headphones you was using? Just the Ray J's. The Raycons. I would never use Ray J headphones. You've been using them all week. I have, these are Raycons? That's why they don't work. <laughs> 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 the Ray -Cons. Talking to the mic. How you done forgot how to do everything? Oh, I my goodness. Give it a microphone, right? There you go. There you all go. Right. Now we working. There all you go. Right. There, there you go. Right. Now say something. All right. All there right. we go. We got hey. Jess back. All right. Sorry, guys. Bit. All right. Hit there the rumor go. report intro, Red. No, we can't. Red is on the other side. He can't oh, hit right. it. In the, he got to run okay. over there. Red's running to the side. There we, there go. we go. All right. All right. Jess. Let's get to the rumor. No let's go. No more crap. It's just for the mess of my news. It is. It is. There we go. The rumor report. It's my news. On the Breakfast Club. Honey, it's ghetto up in here. All right, Shaw. Kodak Black gives Charlemagne his flowers. I don't know why. Well, for acting? That's not how it's supposed to start. Definitely oh. not for acting. <laughs> that's what it's It saying. wasn't for acting. He just he was just saluting us. He was just bigging us up. That's all. I was going to say, I know that's not what he did. I mean, he was in one little movie. <laughs> and like, come on now. All right. But Kodak also says that he won't collab with Drake because he released her loss with 21 Savage. Now, he didn't actually say the name, but people can kind of... And figure out what he's talking about. Over the years, Drake and Kodak have collaborated and given each other their flowers, mm -hmm. but what's already out might be all we have for a while. Kodak recently appeared on a live stream saying that he won't be collabing with Drake anytime soon, seemingly because his her loss collab with 21 Envy, Savage. Envy wants to go to the audio. Yo, it's, it's coming up. Yo, audio, audio. Play I that. I know we're waiting on that Drake feature, man. Oh, yeah. I had told Drake I don't want to, I ain't want to do no collab. Man. No songs or no or no album. Cause we supposed to been did a whole album together before him and Lil Buddy. Before him and Lil Buddy did that sh yeah. I told him I wanted to wait like 2023, like after February. Little Buddy is 21 Savage, by the way. And I Correct. want the, I want the record to show that I knew that. I felt it in my spirit. When Kodak zoomed into the Breakfast Club last year, I said that to him and he hinted at it. Can we play that clip? Yeah, I mean, yeah. everybody no. saw when he posted, uh, when Drake said, you really all that for this generation and the next. But I think that you about to do some type of partnership with OVO, Kodak. That's what I think. That's crazy. <laughs> said it's going to be a moment in the rap game where Kodak is going to be the biggest artist in the world. And I think it's going to be because he going to partner with Drake on something. And then that's when everybody going to really start realizing what, what Kodak can do. God, man. Yeah, we, we, we been on some shit. We be hollering and whatever. I wonder if Drake decided he didn't want to do that project again because Kodak was all over Kendrick album. I wonder. Is it like mm. really baby beefs like that going on or like little... I had, you probably wouldn't do it again. But I feel you probably Kodak wouldn't do it still. Yeah, I, I wouldn't Kodak. do it. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't do it. You're right. But you know, no, nah, nah, I, 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 I'm not even going to say that because I could do it better. I always had it in my mind. Mm. Like I could do it better. And there's a, a hundred different ways that you can do something nowadays. There's no way today... Well, it's, it's harder to be 
original these days mm-hmm. because everybody thinking the same thing. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. With everything being put out there, everybody's receiving it, so they they can kind of get their content off that. But you're right, I, you're right, but then you're wrong because I could do. I, I believe I can do everything. Nah, but I, if you Kodak, you think about it like this: you did an album with Future, you did an album with Twenty One Savage. I don't want to be the third one. I, I I move on, do an album with somebody else. You know? Right? Yeah, yeah. It's like used up, like you passed around. You got the train ran on you. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Basically. I mean, you know, in 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 dumber terms. No, I get what you say. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, was, I ain't trying to hit that at though. It's all it's been all ran through. Oh, you don't want to be the last person in the train? Yeah, he don't want to be the last person. Shouldn't nobody be the last person in the train. Salute to Kodak though. Kodak did give uh he did give a breakfast club uh he did give us all flowers. Said that uh you and Kendrick Lamar got a lot of Comparisons and similarities together. What's shout out to Charlamagne, man. Shout out to Charlamagne. <laughs> Charlamagne. Yeah, breakfast. The whole Breakfast Club family. You know, Charlamagne, he don't really like nobody. Nobody. And so, 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 so for Charlamagne, I always like, you know, they, they, they give me my due. I, I appreciate that. I gotta, you know, give him his, his, his flowers too. But yeah. It's roses. Salute to the Sniper Cypher podcast. I love him. Yeah, I, I like Yak too. I really, really love him. I like people. I don't know why people think I don't like people. Sir, please. No. <laughs> I'm surprised you like me. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, there's okay, a list cool. of people you don't like. That is so not stop true. It, sir. Stop yes, making it things up. You do not like people. Hey, your headline looks stupid on Zoom, too. Anyway. What do you mean? That's like a lace front. It's You're not, not like, but, that, but it looked good because it's on TV. <laughs> it's my head. It actually, looks, it actually looks crisper on television. In person, it looks way stupider. It's like when you see a lace front. So is it like Tory Lane stupider? Yes, Tory Lane's daddy. Safari. Tory Lane's daddy. Oh okay. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we're going to move on. <laughs> Beehive attacks Stephanie Mills. Oh, I, I think we got to go to... You got to go to... Oh, my bad. Yep. If, if I See? could hear. You sp- <laughs> <laughs> the big ass gang me, y'all. Look. Jesus. They sabotaged. Never since that girl called up and was like, Jess, I don't know. <laughs> That's not true. Well, Charlotte, man, who you giving that donkey to, bro? Four after the hour, man. Let's talk big penises, Okay. It's carnival is happening all over the world, and we're going to talk to you about why big penises might be ruining carnival. Why you sit back like that, Jess, as soon as he said big penises? Yo, I'm, because right I'm wondering back. how I ran out of the N-words, but but he, we talking big <laughs> that's a, penises. That's a clinical term. Now, if all I right. say big, that's he, different. Oh, right, you know right. I mean? Like when my man was like, we got cocks in here. We, we're going to interview cocks <laughs> today. <laughs> Oh man, go to commercial. I mean, C-O-X, man. C-O-X, man. C-O-X, man. Oh my God. We'll be back. We're talking Sorry. big penises in the donkey. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Your company has goals this year. Find the right people to help you achieve them with ZipRecruiter, where four out of five employers get a quality candidate within the first day. Try it free at ZipRecruiter.com slash breakfast. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash breakfast. This going to be a donkey, because right now you want some real donkey it's time for Donkey of the Day. So if you ever feel I need to be a donkey, man, <laughs> hit me with the heat. Did she get donkey in the day? Please tell Absolutely. me. I have become donkey of the day. It's the breakfast club, bitches. <laughs> We're donkey. Yeah, it's donkey of the day for Thursday, February 23rd. Goes to a 20-year-old man who was in Brazil at Carnival having big fun. Okay, uh, salute to everyone who has been having big fun at carnivals all around the world. Dropping the clues bombs for everybody at carnivals all around the world. Uh, I'm talking like I know what I'm speaking on, but I don't. Mm-hmm. I just saw Nicki Minaj in Trinidad for Carnival and Ashanti. Uh, I saw her on Instagram saying she was upset she was missing Carnival. And now I read this story about this young man this morning at Carnival. So I'm just assuming it's Carnival season. I'm just assuming that. Now, Carnival looks like a lot of fun. Uh, for those of you who like going out in public and having a lot of the public there, it's a very public thing. And one reason I try to avoid so much of the public is because it's hard to control that much crazy when it's that much public. Okay, the more public there is out, uh, the more chances of you encountering crazy. And today's donkey is absolutely crazy. See, this man, this 20-year-old, was arrested for harassing women. I would think uh, women being harassed at carnivals are very common because the women be out there looking amazing, you know, dressed in their carnival garb, which to me is usually a two-piece swimsuit and a lot of feathers, and you have a lot of men who can't handle being around all that. Okay, they just straight-up perverts, right? Shame on those types of dudes. But this man took harassment to a whole nother level. Okay, but I have to commend the police for being on top of the situation because when a person looks suspicious or is acting as suspiciously as this man was, he should be seized immediately. And I know you can't look at a person and tell, hey, this person is going to be someone who sexually harasses women. But this man wasn't hard to identify at all. See, the reason this human is getting donkey of the day is because he decided to go to carnival in Brazil dressed in a seven foot penis costume. 
Oh. You want to see the picture? Let me show you the picture. Dad. Nope. Don't want to see that picture. Look at the picture. Nope. Mm. See the picture? Nope. Oh, I mean, it's a black one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And that pisses me off. Is this, this is a black penis, but is this a black man? No. That's right. He's either white or Latino. He's some type of other. Listen, if you can't beat him, you join him. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not going to have you I, doing that. I don't like that. I don't like this white or Latino or other deciding to dress in a shack size long suit. Okay? A shack size. His size ain't that size. He that size. Why would you say That's that? That's what I mean. Shack size. I ain't talking about his penis. I'm talking oh, about the actual You finally shack. not talking about somebody's penis. Okay, good. Here we go. I'm sorry. We're on the straight path today. That's nice. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The path ain't crooked a little bit. No, I swear to God, it'd be crooked with you, yo. <laughs> I asked him, did he like future? He said, I mean, I don't love him, but I What? <laughs> <laughs> was y'all in a relationship before? Oh, <laughs> I said you like him, yo. What I saw. Oh, uh, listen, I don't know what makes one want to wake up and dress as Indiana Bones, but we live in an era <laughs> where people can wake up and identify with whatever they want to identify as. And this man dressed up as a seven-foot skin flute to harass <laughs> women at Carnival. Let me tell you something. There's so much wrong with this. Number one is the harassment. Number two, why you got to be a colored Chuck Dickens? Okay, y'all be knowing what y'all doing when you decide to present as a black anything because you know how people perceive black skin all around the world, even when it's black foreskin. Okay? Mm. Now, you really got to go see the pictures for yourself because not only is he presenting as a seven-foot meat puppet, this man, mm. <laughs> this man is, this man dressed as a Wu-Tang Wang got on flip-flops. You ain't yo, see that, Jess. Relax, yo. <laughs> he got on flip-flops, man. Yo, right. A third leg with all his toes out. Yo, listen, I don't care what you say. They may hate us, but everybody loves the black, you know what I'm saying? Penis? Yes. Wow. Wow. I'm on thin ice, so yeah. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What bothers me the most about this situation is this man really woke up and chose sexual violence. He literally woke up and said, I'm going to harass and chase women dressed as a seven foot dark dingling. Okay. I think mm. the only suitable punishment is for him to be in prison in a cell one on one with the largest penis in the penitentiary. Okay? I think he'd love that. You think? I think. I don't know. <sighs> it wouldn't be prison, though. It'd be jail. You know, go find the biggest Johnson in the joint. I'm talking go find someone who got something that's the size of those little women from Atlanta. Okay? And let that man get chased around a jail cell with it. R.I.P. to Miss Minnie. Find someone who got a P. Diddy her size and let him go to work. Okay? Ain't no fun when the rabbit got the custard launcher, is it? Now, you about to meet a seven-foot spank, Aaron. Batter up, young man. Okay? That 20-year-old should have to experience the same trauma that all those women at Carnival had to experience. Mm -hmm. Because he wants to dress up like a seven foot weenie to poop. All right? <laughs> Please oh. give this 20 year old from Rio de Janeiro the sweet sounds of the Hamiltones. Oh, now you are the donkey mm. of the day. You are the donkey of the day. Yeehaw. All right. <laughs> Tell him just being chased and harassed is not fun. Yeah. So this, all right, being chased and harassed <laughs> is not fun. That's, I mean, that's being chased by a big black, you know what I'm saying? Oh, God. Is, is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. But I, I, what's I, wrong with you? I, yeah, he right. deserves that. All he right. deserves this that. This happens to you. You act like this doesn't just happen to you. I, I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, those people want if to If you want that. somebody to do it. Yeah, if you want somebody okay. to do it, cool. Okay, okay. Cool. All right. Well, not thank unwanted. You I don't thank think he woke up and was like, you know what? I'm going to go and harass people with this. I think he's thinking like, they don't like what I got. So let me give them what I don't got, hoping that I can get something. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Listen. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting oh. POV. Okay. All right. Well, Charlamagne's thank still like, no. Nah. <laughs> thank, thank you for that donkey today, Charlamagne. Yes, indeed. Now, when we come back, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Now, Tyler Lepley was joining us this morning, and he was talking about... Uh, Co-parenting. Co-parenting. His, his baby mom and his new girlfriend and... Uh, some of the things that he had to deal with. We have the audio. Miracle Watts had said something about, you know, like she takes on your kids and her kids. Like, <clears throat> how is that situation now? Because I know that April got mad at that. She got yeah, mad sure. at that. How is that now, though? Um, you know, it's 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 a process. You know, it's like yeah. it's definitely better than it was. Yeah. We still got a little way to go. As much as I would, 
not like it to be like that. You know, I can't rush anything because it's, this is, you know, again, the problems of the man in the arena, it just, it, it kind of happens like this. The one thing yeah. I will say is that, again, that's, that's the mother of two of my children. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I have nothing but love and respect for Absolutely. her. Absolutely. So, you know, I give her grace and patience as she, as she figures out what she got to feel herself through. You know? But I would want for somebody to treat my kid like that, like my kid is theirs. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm. All right, so let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. What are we asking? Do you treat your baby moms like your new girl, or how do you I'm, treat your baby mom? I, I like what Jess said at the end. Like, do you want, you know, your your new significant other to treat your kids like yeah. they're their own? Yeah, because I would. It could be somebody who don't like your kid, and now you got to wonder, like, should I send him over there, and I got to keep him from his dad? You know what I'm saying? So. All right. Well, let's open up the phone lines. Mm -hmm. We'll discuss when we come back. Don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800 585 1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our special guest host. We have Jess Hilarious here. Yes, we do. All right. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Tyler Lepley. Tyler Lepley, excuse me. He was here this morning and he was talking about uh, his relationship with his baby moms and, and their kids and his new girl, or his new fiance, I should say, and, and their kids. Let's listen to the audio. Miracle Watts had said something about, you know, like she takes on your kids as her kids. Like, <coughs> how is that situation now? Because I know that April got mad at that. She got yeah, mad sure. at that. How is that now, though? Um, You know, it's 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 a process. You know, it's like yeah. it's definitely better than it was. Yeah. You still got a little way to go. As much as I would not like it to be like that, you know, I can't rush anything because it's, this is, you know, Again, the problems of the man in the arena, it just it, it kind of happens like this. The one thing yeah. I will say is that, again, that's that's the mother of two of my children. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I have nothing but love and respect for Absolutely. her. So, you know, I give her grace and patience as she as she figures out what she got to feel herself through. You know? But I would want for somebody to treat my kid like that, like my kid is theirs. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's an interesting conversation. You know what I mean? Um, because, you know, you got to ask, do you want someone to treat your kids like they're their own? But also... Something else he said in there, like, do you treat your ex, you know, like you do your your new girl just to just to keep the peace? Now, Jess, you gotta, you, you this is this is your lane, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because I listen mm -hmm. to, you know, of course you got carefully reckless on the black effect, but you have uh, mm -hmm. carefully dis reckless discussions, yeah, with yeah. your family, and you do a lot of conversations with your baby daddy. Mm -hmm. So, do you feel like you want his new girl to treat your son like? Well, listen, her own? all of my. Baby fathers, baby mothers, because mm -hmm. that's a lot, if you will. Um, they all treat my son amazing. I treat all of his kids amazing. Mm -hmm. um, every relationship he's been in, and there's been a lot of them after me, nobody has ever mistreated my son. Um, I've never had an issue with any of Rome's girlfriends or none of that. Mm -hmm. Like other baby mothers, just one. But but even but she's never treated my child crazy. Mm -hmm. That was just something you know that we as mothers, as women, or whatever. But. Nah, it's, so you, it's never been that way. So do you want them to take a mother type role, or you just want them just to be cool? You don't gotta take a mother. They that's what they end up doing anyway. But yeah. they, you don't have to take that. You don't have to be over nurture like uh, you know what I'm saying where it seems forced. Or if it's something that you just because he needed my my son's dad has been with a lot of girls who didn't have kids, so they didn't really even have experience in being around kids, mm -hmm. but. They tried. They were just like, you don't really got to try to be his mother, mm -hmm. but you have to, you have to like my child. My child got to okay. like you too. Like, But yeah. let me ask you, Jess. So yeah, you know, when it's a younger child, they have to be motherly, right? But yeah, what is, what yeah, is your son called? Is, is, it, is it like mom too? Is it like Whoa, sweet God, tea? It'll never happen. It'll <laughs> never happen. He better not ever call nobody else no mom. Mom T. Uh -uh, not, not mom T. Mom T. Not mom T. Okay, okay. Last day, huh? All right, yeah. Mom, I don't care. Mom, two, three, whatever. No, eight is, I'm, I'm the first and only mom. He can call them Miss, whatever, because you got to put a handle on it. I don't care how young the girl is, whatever. It's going to be Miss, whatever her name is. Now, now what about, uh, you know, Tyler bought his Miracle or G-Wagon, right? And I, yeah. I, I asked him, like, is, you know, just to keep the peace, do you do stuff like that for your other baby moms? Is that expected of a man? Because you think about when people get divorced, you know, they got to make sure that their their ex yes. is set up the same way they're set up. I think yeah. they should. You know? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you don't want your one kid to be driving in a G63 G-Wagon. And that's one hundred eighty thousand dollars. And the other kid to be driving in a, a, a Ford Escort. What is wrong with Ford Escort? But now, look, yo, that's that's. Well, listen, man. Why would you say that? Word up. You what know about people a, listening to us in Ford Escort? Say a Prius. 
Okay, Prius. Yeah, yeah, Prius yeah. is that's, our amazing that's too. That's, I want one. Nah, <laughs> not not if my brother got a G63. That's what I'm saying. When I'm pulling up, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. I'm pulling up in that. No. So do you have? So do you saying you have to do that if you got if I got an ex? And she got kids of mine. She got to be riding the same way my new woman no, is riding. I don't agree with that. I don't know what Envy is saying over there, but okay. I, I don't, I don't think that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that. I think whatever I do for my kids. All right, cool. I don't. I shouldn't have to be responsible for what you got going on after me. Like I'm in a new relationship. My responsibility is my kids and me protecting. But the kids gonna still be but in the Prius. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The kids go. Your kids gonna you know be pulling the Prius. They as long as they not drive, they in the back. It's about the person driving. You in the back, so you good. You don't got no bills. You ain't got nothing to worry about. You still on four wheels. Yeah, now, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. you got to have another um, a Mercedes, but give me something that the kids feel comfortable Yo, in and not making fun of. The, the, listen, we grew up different, whatever. But the, he didn't buy the kids a G-Wagon. He bought Miracle a G-Wagon. Yeah. The baby wasn't even But the baby going to be in the G-Wagon, though. The baby don't know nothing about no G-Wagon. That's true. It ain't that. Them kids know it. For, like, your son is in fifth grade. He knows the difference between a G-Wagon and a Prius. I'm telling you, my kids ain't... <laughs> All right, yo. Listen, I don't care. I said what I said. That's it. All right, let's go to the phone line. Jess' son definitely know the difference between the G-Wagon and the Prius. I know. That ain't the point. <laughs> I gave that man $300 for his birthday. He ain't want that. No, <laughs> shut get up. Back. All right, look, first is, I have a G-Wagon, and I also have... Uh, I forgot the name of the, my, whatever my other Benz is. I got both of them, Ooh. right? Ooh. Talk to Shut up. Shut up. But my baby father, he got a nice little Acura. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we showing my son the best of both worlds. Ty, you know what I'm saying? Tyler, little kids, they, they gonna know the best of both. That's it. That's it. Man, you so stupid. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Cupcake. Hey, good hey, morning. Guys. Hey, Jack, bitch, I love you. I love you too, baby. What's your thoughts, mama? What do you think? Well, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a baby mother, so I feel like it's very important for whoever my daughter's father with to treat her exactly how I would treat her. You know, I want her to feel like she got two moms. You know, it's important. However, that is not her experience. You said that's not your experience? No. The woman is just like so jealous of my child. Mm. I don't understand it. Mm. Like, she started dating my daughter's father when I was pregnant. And I came to her mm. when the baby was born like, girl, I'm her mother, you her man, let's come together, bring it in like a fan. And it definitely didn't go down that way. And my daughter is now seven, and we still dealing with that. See, this is a good example of yeah. maybe you should treat both, like the baby daddy should probably treat both of them the same. Like you buy one a Prius, you got to buy yes. the other one a Prius. Yes, yes. And like he's starting to realize that, like you have to be there for your baby mother no matter what, because at the end of the day, we have a common. Well, wow. he dated a little too quick. Everything. You thank, were still pregnant, you, and he had a new girlfriend. That, yeah. I don't know. That's how things happen like that because my baby father been in that situation too. But it is different. Shorty felt the way because he was having it. That's what her though. She she was having a baby. The baby wasn't even here yet. Mm -hmm. And then, and so she probably felt the way because honestly. Is this breaking news? Is this something that we around? never heard? Are y'all no, messing around? No, she talking about the last, she talking about the last oh. caller. Yeah, the girl you hung up on. The, oh. um, yeah, like, it was, yeah, it, I, that's different. The girl, she met the guy and, and his baby mother was still pregnant. Yeah. They broke up while she was pregnant. So she probably still was like. She mad. She he got could, yeah. He could go back with her anytime. Their baby is so fresh and so new. Yeah. You know, so that's different. All right. 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts? If, if you buy your baby, your new baby mom or your new fiance, a G-Wagon, let's say, you know, is it your right? Are you supposed to buy the old baby mom something comparable? And so do you, your kids and, can be driving in a comparable type of and, car and, 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 and the same and, lifestyle. Yes, and do you want someone to treat your kids like they're their own as well? All right, Basically, let's talk that, about it. it. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it, man. I like me. I like me. I like me. Call me. Get your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We have, uh, sh what's wrong with you? Oh, no, I was singing Jess and Stephanie Mills. He's singing Stephanie Mills. That's all, but go ahead, continue. Jess Hilarious is here, our co-host, and we're asking 800-585-1051. This comes from our Tyler LaPlay, 
What, what's his name? Tyler. Tyler. Not Leo. That I used name. to call him Tyler LaPlay all the time. <laughs> Tyler it's Lepley. It's Lepley, yo. Black it's people Lepley. always want to fancy up their name. I know. Name be Johnson. Reginald Vell Johnson. <laughs> Johnson. Tyler LaPlay. That man's name is not no LaPlay. It's Lepley. Tyler Lepley. He was here earlier. This is what he said. Miracle Watts had said something about, you know, like, she takes on your kids as her kids. Like, <clears> how is that situation now? Because I know that April got mad at that. She got yeah, mad sure. at that. How is that now, though? Um, You know, it's, it's, it's a process. You know, it's like, yeah. it's definitely better than it was yeah it's still got a little way to go as much as i would not like it to be like that you know i can't rush anything because it's, this is you know again the problems of the man in the arena it just it, it kind of happens like this the one thing yeah. i will say is that again that's that's the mother of two of my children you know what yeah. i'm saying i have nothing but love and respect for Absolutely. her so you know i give her grace and patience as she as she figures out what she gotta feel herself through you know but i would want for somebody to treat my kid like that like my kid is theirs you know what I'm yeah saying? for sure yeah so we're asking 800-585-1051, you know, if you buy your fiance something, are you supposed to take care of your baby moms the same way? And also, do you want your fiance to, you know, look at your your other kids the same way as they look at your kids? That's the question we're asking, correct? Mm -hmm. Hello, yeah, who's yes. this? This is Shaquana. Hey, Shaquana. Hey, guys, good morning. Yes, what? Ray, she <laughs> is. <laughs> I knew I, I wanted to get so bad, but she already sound like she mad. I ain't right. Shaquana. Shaquana. Good morning, Shaquana. Uh, it's Shaquana. I'm just messing with Don't you. Don't play with her. <laughs> Don't play with her. Don't play with her. Don't play with her. What's your, what's your thoughts, mama? Um, honestly, I just want to weigh in and say um, it depends on how long you've been with the person because I have an ex who would take our kids around his girlfriend he just met like a week ago. Mm. And I feel that's something you shouldn't do. But if you're serious with the person and, you know, you're, you feel like you got a future with them, I mean, I see nothing wrong with it. But mm. on a standstill, it is a lot of crazy people in the world. Yeah. And you got to be cautious. A lot of people harming kids and mm -hmm. doing crazy things to kids. So that's where I'm with it. Like, if um, you think you're going to be with that person long term and you dating for a minute and you get to know each other, you're talking about your kids. Okay. But... On your first date, you're not taking the kids to Chuck E. Cheese to play together because y'all both got kids. I agree. Right. I agree. I agree. Uh, Thank you, Shaquana. You can't just be bringing anybody around you, Sharon. Yeah, that's that's what she's saying. That's what she's saying. But I do, bel I do believe that um, if I got kids and you got kids and we ain't got no babysitters, we want to see each other bad enough. Yeah, let's meet up at Chuck E. Cheese's. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, who's this? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hey, what's your name? Monica. Hey, Monica. Good morning. Good morning. What's your thoughts, Mama? My thoughts are I do not date with men. I don't date men with kids for that fact. If I can't let my kids go over to the other parents, I don't feel comfortable, then it's not. Like, how am I going to feel comfortable with my kid going to see his other parent if I don't like or get along with the other person? That's now, real. is that better? No, but let me ask you this, Monica. Is that because you better or is that because has he ever given you any type of like, yo, I'm going I'm to put my son in jeopardy or put my kid in jeopardy? Like, is he that? You got to know the other parent, too. Are they ever going to bring somebody that you don't like around your kid that's going to do something to your kid? Is that better or is that just how you feel? No, that's not better. I think it's just that uh, as a mother, yeah. you, I'm going to speak it from the mother point of view. Mm -hmm. As a mother, you have to feel comfortable. If you're not comfortable with the man choosing the right mate, it's not ever going to work. So I would think that maybe me and the girl would have to talk. I would be mature right. enough to be like, let me talk to the girl. And if I'm feeling her and I like her, then yeah, it's right. a girl. you can go for it. But listen, Jess. Yes. You must, and I'm talking about you have to stay the permanent co-host on this show. Thank I've been crying all week. I'm, yo, this is the funniest this show ever been in my life. Charlamagne is at his best with you. Thank you That's so much, much girl. I, I agree with everything you said. Just why'd you stand up? Why'd you just stand up <laughs> to do that? Because I, I had to. I, I had to. And I think I dressed the best one here out of everybody that I saw. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, thank, I, thank you so much, baby. I already told you she get the permanent role. I guarantee you she won't be coming here like she hosting no award show every day. <laughs> I guarantee you it'll be sweatsuits within two months. And some sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's all right. So what's the moral of the story? What is the moral of the story, Jess? Because you've been co-parenting very well for a, a pretty long time now. Oh, man. The the, the moral of the story is, all right, so look, uh, what, what she said, which is also a part of the moral, you still cannot say, because she said, uh, if you don't if you don't trust the, the other parent to date somebody that you, you can't really, that's still in a sense controlling. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you don't know who they're going to date. They dated you. So if you're going off of their past, then you got to include yourself. Like, you can't just <laughs> say, he, and, not, and not, that's not do you, Monica. 
But I'm just saying, like, it's just period. You can't control mm-hmm. who some you. Who are you to say, like, oh, hey, I don't like the way he date. I don't, I don't. You don't until you get to know somebody. But I like how she ended it. If we have a conversation, look, you're gonna be around my child. This mm-hmm. is who I am. This is, you know, whatever. So the moral of the story is, you do not. I don't think you have to. You're not responsible for your ex. You're responsible for your kids. I think that's what that is. Oh, I, that's that's real. Me. No, that makes sense. You're not responsible for your ex. You're responsible for your kids. You're right. not. Yeah, you're not. You're not responsible. Like my, like I said, my son's dad has five kids with five different women. As after he moved on, he take care of his bomb father. Take care of his kids. I don't child support no more for none of them. But <laughs> no more. Yeah. But he is not responsible for their mothers. Right. Not in that. Not, mm. Yep. I, it's different in a marriage because the divorce you gotta settle. That you gotta. Correct. You get this. I get this. Whatever. But like girlfriend, boyfriend. Yo, if if it's not about my child, yo, I'm in my relationship. But I'm let me good. ask you this, Jess. What's good? Let's say you move on, and now that one child lives a different life than those all the, those other four kids. How do you think those other four kids will feel? Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. That one kid, he gets you know he gets to to, to go to the football games. He gets to go to this because he's with. The father all day long in that house. Don't you feel like all the kids should have that same love and that same feeling? But that's what I'm saying. What the ex got to do with that? I'm gonna go pick my kid up, and we going. I'm gonna take you with the rest of my kids. Well, that's we right. with daddy. It, it ain't. I'm gonna pick right. you and the baby mother up, and y'all. And it, no, I'm picking my. Oh, I'm gonna get all my kids together, just like Rome do it. Just like my son's dad does it. He don't do nothing with all his other kids. Or if he got his girls, it's girls' day, and it, boys, boys' day. Then he got days where he get all of them. So he does. I don't know how that's Nick. Do it, but my baby father do it, do it. Basically, what Jess is saying, she only buying McDonald's for her son. She ain't buying McDonald's <laughs> for the rest of her own kids. <laughs> yo, yo, what's next, yo? I don't got time. We got rumors on the way. What we talk about, Jess? Let's get into the rumors right now. We talking Stephanie Mills. It's Jess with the mess. Am I new? Am I real? the ghetto. This is the rumor report. Am I new? Am real? On the Breakfast Club. Ooh, honey, it's ghetto up in here. Jess. Hello, Jess. We're Jess. on air. Jess. Hi. Hey, Jess oh, with the that's because I can't. Hey, yo, listen. I can't hear. Turn your headphones up. Look at the volume button <laughs> yeah. right there. Jess. Yo, dead at, yo, Red. Look, My. yo. No, back up. Yo, get away from me, yo. <laughs> she she, she <laughs> calls him over and tells him to back, back up. Turned up. You know what? Is he turned up? I'm, I'm, I'm turned up, man. All right. I'm sick of y'all. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Quavo dropped his new song, Greatness, where he sings. Uh, Quavo dropped his new song, Greatness, where he seemingly addresses the future of the Migos. He released a clip to his new song. Uh, okay. Will All we right. will we ever get used to hearing any of the Migos by themselves? No. no. And and because no. you're not the Migos, which is which is two, man. You're not. You That's can't. not fair to them as artists, though, right? Because even with that mm-hmm. record by Quavo, when I hear it, I like I like the record, but people be like, "Nah, he need take off." You know, you talking about the, the one that we just saw? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, I oh, think yo, he that's need fine. offset. But that's any group. That's what they said. If you want to go back, it's Run DMC. That's what they said about Outkast. That's what they said about Mob Deep. And now they say with the Migos, people are just used to it. They used to it, but it's like I think how they, not even how they ended, but with take off, like. Dying, it's like yo, mm-hmm. it's, it's it will not ever even be the, same. Be the same. It mm-hmm. will never be the same because to be honest, I this is just my opinion. He was the one holding them musically. Oh, he was the best. To he me, was, Takeoff was the best lyrically in the. You Migos. know what I'm saying? And he was the one that played the back the most, but he was definitely yeah. the most involved musically. You know what I'm saying? And Quavo, I, Quavo says something like that in that song about you know being that takes gone, there will never be a yeah. we as far as a group again. Right. right. And 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 there will be fans that's like, oh, I need we 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 need the music. We need it. Just get back together. Get back. I don't think they need to get back together. I think we just wanna and need to see them. Be okay again yeah. together. They, they don't need to, to do music together. I would love to see them. I know, I know right now that they're, they're both probably in a personal spot where they feel sure. the emotions are running, but I would love to see them back together doing some music. And Envy, you a damn lie about that. Outcast. Like you, mm. you, we'd love to get Outcast together, but I can I can definitely take me some Big Boy by himself, and I can definitely take me some Andre 3K by himself. No, I'd rather, pause, pause. I'd rather because Outcast together. Nah, pause. pause. This pause. is not. This pause. is a lot. Pause. I can definitely pause. take Big Boy. Like, come on, it's a lot going on over there. Pause. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I, oh my God. Like, why you gotta definitely take a Big Boy? Like, why are you? Come on, yo, this is crazy. All right. And three thousand of them. You want three thousand? Yeah, y'all yeah, say yeah. I could definitely take three three thousand Andres. Yo, come on, it's ridiculous. 
Jesus. Oh, man. Let's get into your crush, though. <sighs> Beehive attacks Stephanie Mills after mm. claiming Diana Ross and Beyonce can't be compared because Diana is classy and B is hip hop. She spoke about this in a recent interview with Vlad. What? Stephanie Mills doing over there with Vlad. <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I know that ain't part of the story, but I want to know that. How you get Stephanie Mills in there, Vlad? Vlad got some, Vlad had Smokey Robinson too. What? Yeah, Vlad be over you there cooking. You talking about smoking that? Don't, you talking about that one? What you mean, man? Smoking that dumb. What the hell is you cold. talking about? You never hear a, a Smokey Robinson rap song? Oh, yeah. Out of all Smokey Robinson records, that's yeah, the one you that, picked. That's my doing that crime. <laughs> what? Doing that time. That's my song. Oh, but, oh man. Not Tears of a Crown. Yeah, tears of not a Crown. Not You Really Got a Hold on Me. Not Just to See Her. You pick up that song. I, I like all that, but that rap, man, that rap, that, that was that was cool. Oh, all man. right, look. Uh, I don't want no smoke with the Beehive, so I'm not even going to try to paraphrase. But we have audio, so let Stephanie Mills speak for herself. I don't think you can compare Beyonce to... Diana Ross. I mean, Diana Ross. No, just in terms of stardom? As ter in terms of stardom, it's still different. It's still, I mean, Diana is, is glamour and, you know, Beyonce is, is, is glamour. It's just different. It's hip hop. I consider, uh, Beyonce hip hop. I consider Diana R&B and pop and, and just, I consider her royalty. Diana, I've always wanted to be like, Diana, and when I saw Lady Sings the Blues, and I would go to her shows in Vegas, they were always so wonderful and 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 classy and everything. Diana Ross is the epitome of of beauty and class to me. I think Stephanie Mills is bugging. First I, of all, wow. watch your mouth. Wow, nah, she bugging. Watch like, your mouth. Get, like, wow. come over and wipe get, your hairline off. Watch it. Watch your wow. mouth. Beyonce is not just hip hop. Beyonce I'll, I'll is lick my R and B. And wipe your beard off. Beyonce <laughs> is R and B, and Beyonce, yes, she is classy as well as elegant, as well as hip hop, as well as our culture. I, you know, I love Stephanie yeah. Mills, but nah, I, I think she's seeing it from a different lens. What I would say is. I love me some Stephanie Mills, mm. and I need more context. Yo, shut up, <laughs> man. Yo, shut up, man. I need man. more context, okay? I, I agree, Beyonce's absolutely not hip-hop, though. No, she's arm. She's mm. everything. She's R&B, she's yeah. hip-hop, she's classy, she's, she's, every, she's everything. But to I, say that she's not classy and, and all that, nah, she didn't say that. But you didn't hear her say that. You heard her say, Diana is glamorous, and Beyonce is glamorous, too. And then she stopped herself, because listen, Thank that's you, her time. That was her era. Of course, she's not gonna go to the Renaissance, uh, uh, Renaissance tour, the Renaissance tour, and be like, "I want to be like her." Nah, her time is already like past as far as wanting to be. Damn, just no. Oh no. no, that's not what I'm saying. No, you and make <laughs> no. What you said makes perfect sense because she's an OG. Is, yeah, she she's an not OG. gonna look at a young person and be like, "I want to be like that." Her yeah, icon was Diana that Ross. Was her time? That's who she looked up Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And I agree ex with everything that she said. Is just that. Oh the, shoot! I Beehive, do. You hear her? She never said B is no. She never said B is not classy. She just said Diana is classy and B yeah. is hip hop. She could have went on, went on and on and on with the list with Beyonce. But, but when you but say somebody's classy her. and somebody's hip hop, that's basically saying they're not classy. No, that's, 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 that's not. What I'm saying. Why that's you not. say that? That's not hip hop. Don't mean you're not classy. Like I said, that's why I need more context. Y'all yeah. want me? Y'all want me to call the OG up here? Y'all want? Yes. Y'all want OG yes. Stephanie up yes. here? Yeah, but I don't I think mind. you're gonna ask her about this. Yes, so I, I don't am. need that. Well, if I don't, you can. I am. I'm going to ask All right. Yeah. Gonna, Stephanie will be here tomorrow. All right, cool. Okay, enough said. All right. <laughs> you make that. That was just with the mess. It was. Let me see what Stephanie doing. She'll be up here tomorrow. Oh, my God. All right. Well, up next is the People's Choice Mix. Let's go. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, uh, it's Black History Month. We got our co-host, Jess Hilarious, here. What we doing, Charlemagne? Man, you know, every day during Black History Month, the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network, we put out a podcast called I Didn't Know, Maybe You Didn't Either, hosted by my guy, B-Dot. And today, B-Dot is going to tell you about sundown towns. Oh, do you know what a sundown town is? Find out right now. I didn't know, maybe you didn't either. I didn't know. I didn't know. All right, first you need to know what a sundown town or a sunset town was. And that was a town, city, or neighborhood in the United States that excluded all black folk after dark. And the term sundown came from the signs that would be posted all around telling people of color they had to leave the town by sundown. They said many times the signs were placed at the town's borders, and they would say something like, Negro, don't let the sun set on you here. And the exclusion was official town policy. And it was in place through restrictive covenants that they agreed on with the real estate agents in the community. Of course, many times the policy was enforced through intimidation. Intimidation could be a different number of ways, though. 
I mean, your typical harassment by law enforcement or neighbors. A lot of times, black folk just got lynched. Victor Green, he was from Harlem, and he wrote the Negro Motorist Green Book. You should look that up. It was a book that details safe places for black travelers to rest and eat without the fear of being harassed or threatened or even killed by white folk. Also, check out the 1968 Fair Housing Act. See, that's pretty much what made sundown towns illegal. On paper, that is. Do some homework. Find out if where you live now was once a sundown town. And contrary to popular belief, <laughs> sundown towns were prevalent in the north, not the south. And I didn't know. <laughs> Maybe you didn't either. I didn't know. I actually grew up in a sundown town. Monk's Corner, South Carolina is a sundown town. You, 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 you grew up in a sundown town? You in Baltimore, you might have? Baltimore. No, probably not. But that was a no. sundown town. I don't you want to listen to what B-Dot just said? No. It's a town that when that sun go down, black people better have their ass home. Oh, no, oh, that's yeah, not New York. Yeah, 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 That's definitely, yeah. <laughs> nah, New York, we outside. Yeah. That, that's what that means. That's Baltimore, Chicago, uh, Detroit, Atlanta. I, uh, uh, I don't know about Atlanta. What? That's sun up and sun downtown. It don't matter. They will <laughs> rob you. They robbed me at the gas station 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh, it don't matter where, where the sun at. They don't Jeez. care. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Well, so make we sure back. you subscribe to the I Didn't Know Maybe You Didn't Either podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network available everywhere you listen to podcasts. Also, make sure that you subscribe to uh, Carefully Reckless that drops every Wednesday. That's right. Every Wednesday. Just hilarious. Make sure you get that. That's right. That's also on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast mm -hmm. Network. All right. When we come back, we got the positive notice. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our co-host Jess Hilarious. What's good? Now, now you got your party this <sighs> Sunday, uh, Jess? Yes, I do. I got my party this Sunday. I am. I am. I, I got it. And listen, because I've been on Breakfast Club, and I keep talking about it. I sold a bunch of tickets. It's, it's three left, I heard, and I wanted to know if, if y'all was going to buy them. It's three left. It's so only three left? It's only three tickets left. I was like, wow. Damn. So now I was going to give them to other people in the city who are very. I, I, I Honestly, I was going to give them to Wallo and Gilly. But y'all know what? I want to give them to you and DJ Envy. Wallo and Gilly coming too? Yeah, they're going to slide through. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So what's up? What's good? No, wait, wait, I mean we might pull. I don't know yet. Jay, why it, you doing this to me? Envy lying. Stop putting I me under know. pressure. Envy lied, but he lied the good way. He knew he wasn't gonna be it. But he was like, "No, I got you." I, I don't lie. I'm really thinking about coming. I You're not driving that. down there, you liar. Why would I drive? I fly. But I'm just saying, I might wake up on Sunday and I don't know how I might be feeling. So I don't want to make any <laughs> promises because I do that. I will do that. Just I'll say I'm coming, and then day of I'll be like, "Nah, I ain't coming." Again. I know you right. I do that too. So I don't want to lie to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who, who, when do you who do you usually do that to when you say nah I ain't coming now everybody am I lying in <laughs> men too <laughs> lying. everybody you, be, so you will look at a man and be like yo I wanted to come but I ain't coming no more yo, shut <laughs> up, no, I'm yo. just asking I'm just asking is, is that the why, way why, it goes why, 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 right. why you got shows this weekend in Raleigh too. I got shows this weekend in Raleigh North Carolina get your tickets on justhilariousofficial.com we got two shows every day Friday and Saturday at Good Nights Comedy Club all right. And make sure you subscribe to the Carefully Reckless podcast hosted by Jess Hilarious on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network, make available sure. everywhere you listen to podcasts. I'm really sad this is just uh, last day for now. Yeah, for now. She could come back. For this week. Acting like she goes away. She could come back. I know. I mean, she got work all this weekend. Weekend. I said That's why I said for now. You know, yeah. Okay, for now. You know, it, feel, it felt good waking up seeing my sis every every Definitely. morning. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. You know, we just got to put a, a quota on her so she doesn't say it oh too many my times. Oh, God. That's, you know... Look, he can't even say it. Technically, I said enough for you, me, and him, so he <laughs> can't right. even say it no That's more. I don't even think he can say it. He can't say it anyway. Yeah, he should, he he should, should say nig, bro. I'm black. No, you're not. He can't bro. even say no, nig. He can't. He can't say. You don't it. think he can say nig? The, the, half the, of the, the I am black. Nah, nah bro. Yo. Nah. Oh my goodness. Hey, I just want to tell people too before we go. Uh, make sure that you go check out 88 the movie. Uh, I think this is our last week in theaters. It came out last week, and uh, we're in theaters. Through the rest of the week and the weekend, um, it's a movie that I executive produced, starring Brandon V. Dixon, Natori Norton, and uh, Orlando Jones. It's out right now, and it's also streaming on Apple TV. So if you can't get to the theaters to see it, uh, watch it on Apple uh, Television. And thank you to everybody who has checked it out, and I appreciate all the reviews, good, bad, and different. You know, um, but yes, go check out 88 the movie uh, that I executive produced. 
Thank you. And right after that, you can check out I Got a Story to Tell BET on, on BET Plus, starring Jess Hilarious. Really? I'm not only doing comedy. Yes, I'm doing drama. So, you know. Is that a shot? That's definitely a shot. He was like, it's not a comedy movie. <laughs> no, I do way no. more than comedy. You can check that out on my BET Plus episode. I got my very own episode. Yes. Yes, you know that there's not too many things I do that I do not think of you top of the mind awareness. You know this. I'm right. Okay? All right. It just, I just didn't feel like this was the project for you. I appreciate that. That's all. But please go check out I Got a Story to Tell on BET Plus because I'm crying and then y'all going to love it. You cried? Cry, man. Wow. Twice. Go watch that on BET Plus right now. Thank you. Leave Whoa. us on a positive note. Listen, the positive note is this, man. Uh, have the confidence to walk the F away if you aren't happy. It is, it is, it is uh, the key to your mental and emotional well-being. Having the confidence to walk the F away if you aren't happy. Hmm. I got, one. I got one. I'm sorry. Okay. Hold on. You got a positive note? Yeah, I got a positive okay, note. Go. And this is all this is to you, yo. This is for you, uh, Charlemagne. I'm going to get you a, um, a laptop because you got a ThinkPad. <laughs> um, yo, I've been looking at that all week and I just wanted to get that off my chest on air. Like, you got a ThinkPad. You got a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? No, but this is why I put my thoughts. It's a ThinkPad. Yeah, no, nah, that's Thinking from like thoughts. a long time ago. That's <laughs> one of the first laptops that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like I was in elementary oh, when my man. teacher had one. So I, I think I think that you need to update that, brother. You, All right. you 44, you 74. ThinkPad is not what we're doing. <laughs> we're not doing it. So yeah, I love you. <sighs> Breakfast Club, bitches. Y'all finished or y'all done? <laughs> 